to another week at DeForest Middle School. This week, um, big day is Monday. We have an in-service in the morning. Dr. Borden will give us a quick uh, update of the state of things um, at 8 o'clock in the PAC. And then we'll break off into levels. The middle school will be in the band room at the high school. Uh, we'll start out with an overview of SLOs and kind of where that's at right now. Bill Kim and I will lead that uh, discussion. And then Greg Greg and David O'Keefe uh, will be doing the teacher experience with educator effectiveness. Um, then you've got some time to get prepared for parent-teacher conferences, and then that will take us through the evening until 7.30. Folks, you're going to hear a little bit more about this on Monday, um, but I definitely want to get that included in here as well. Uh, regarding SLO, student learning outcomes, or I'm sorry, student learning objectives and school learning objectives, um, the, this is the middle part of the year with mid-year review. I just did mine last week with Ann Higgins. Um, one of our two building-wide goals um, we realized is really not a very good goal. It's impossible for us to measure because the data that we have right now just isn't valid. Um, and I'll explain more about that on Monday. Um, the other goal is actually a really good one, um, but it focuses on um, achievement, which is great, um, but it doesn't necessarily focus on growth, which is also an important thing. So one of the things we're gonna talk about on Monday um, in our presentation about SLOs is using the mid-year to make adjustments to the goal, um, making sure that you're on target with your data and so on and so forth. It's a very important step um, in the SLO process. Um, and it's one that I'm just learning about myself right now. So um, we're going to share some information about that. And the other piece of that is the huge importance of some type of pre and post data, whether it's a pre-assessment, post-assessment, um, using uh, star scores from the fall to the spring, and so on and so forth. Those are going to be really important things for all of us to be thinking about as we think about student learning objectives uh, going into next year. All right, some of you have heard uh, some information or buzz or whatever you want to call it about field trips. Um, we've got some issues that we, frankly, we need to talk about. Um, we've got uh, the rising cost of field trips. We've got an awful lot of days that we're out of the building for field trips um, in a time when, of course, we're all fighting for how much academic time can we have with our kids. Um, uh, and then really kind of thinking about what's the academic value of some of the field trips and so on that, that are out there. Um, is all the way down to some of the in-house events that we have and so how do we place different types of importance on whether um, you know we go visit a museum somewhere versus we go to a movie versus uh, students putting together a presentation for um, an audience I and mean, there's all kinds of different things that have different um, different lenses uh, when you look through different lenses have different levels of importance so um, one of the things we really want to talk about is how do we do that? We've got so much going on with field trips plus everything else that we've got on our plates. How do we balance all of it? So we're going to do a listening session. As of right now, I've got that scheduled for the morning of March 18th. Um, the purpose of that will be, frankly, just to talk, um, just to see where people are at um, and what their opinions are about field trips. What I can tell you is that there's no huge plans to change the end of the year field trips and so on for this year. I know that's uh, it's kind of a rumor that's out there. Um, we, we will if there's somebody that wants to try something different, um, but for sure next year, um, the 14-15 school year, we're looking at some changes with how all of that operates. So we're looking to start that conversation uh, on March 18th, probably put a little subcommittee with a representative from each grade level, allied arts and so on, um, to talk about it and make some recommendations as we move forward. So be prepared for more discussion about that. Just want to make sure that you know that it is, if you're hearing rumors, it is a discussion, but there's been zero um, real conversation and decisions about what do we do next. Last thing on my list for uh, this week's update is communication of grades. Uh, there have been some smaller conversations around the building um, that I've had with folks about how do we communicate and when do we communicate if students are failing or have Ds um, in their classes. Uh, we've done some uh, polling around the Badger Conference to see what other schools do. We've looked at what do other schools in our own district do. Um, and frankly, the results are all over the place. So we are uh, looking at trying to clean that up. So what does the office need to do to communicate? Um, how to check grades, when to check grades, and so on, um, all the way through um, progress reports, how that works, um, to when, when should, when, when do teachers need to make sure they make a contact with families if kids aren't, aren't doing well in their courses. 
Um, one thing to be to very clear about is there's nothing that replaces the communication between a teacher and a, a parent. Um, you know, Skyward is a great tool. How do we fold that in? But it doesn't replace all communication. So what we're trying to do is figure out how do we get that balance. And again, probably get a, a little ad hoc committee together to kind of look at that once we get these drafts of ideas put out there for people to weigh in on. So um, again, there's conversation about that. We'll be um, bringing some of that to um, different grade levels and uh, groups of people. So that being said, have a great week, everyone. Uh, Monday's the long day. Hopefully it'll be a positive one. And have a great week. We'll see you in the hallways.